Hi everyone, a very good afternoon to all of you. Thank you for joining us in today's um, Discover Monash webinar, whereby we'll be featuring three of our study areas, radiography and medical imaging, radiation sciences and psychology. So we will be covering these study areas in the following order in today's webinar. Before I pass the time on to our academics and students, I would like to begin today by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today and pay my respects to their elders past and present. I extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples here today as well. Before I pass the time on to John and Laurie, I would like to quickly um, run through a couple of um, special entry schemes um, that Monash University offers. So you could be eligible for Monash Guarantee if you have experienced financial disadvantage or if you've lived in the so low socioeconomic area or if you're an indig Indigenous Australian or if you are currently attending a Monash uh, listed underrepresented school. Or you could also um, be eligible for CS. So CS is a special entry access scheme um, that you could apply via VTAC. So how CS work is that your ATAR score will be adjusted in recognition of circumstances that may have affected your education and your ATAR score. So application for CS will be via VTAC. You can find out more about um, our special entry access schemes via the website there. I will also be posting that link in our chat. So this is the Monash Guarantee um, pathway that I was talking about earlier just now. So you could see that the ATA score listed here is slightly lower than the scores published on our website. So if you fall into either or of the categories mentioned earlier, you may be eligible for Monash Guarantee. I'd like to pass the time on now to um, John who will be talking to you about radiography and medical imaging at Monash. On to you, John. Great, thanks, uh, Shi. Appreciate that. Thank you, and welcome to everybody. And uh, the same, like uh, Shi, I'd like to also acknowledge the traditional owners on the land on which uh, we, we, we work. Uh, thank you very much, and acknowledge the leaders past and present. So I'll just share my screen with you guys and spend a couple of minutes talking about the uh, Bachelor of Radiography and Medical Imaging Honours Degree at Monash. My name is John McInerney, and I'm the course coordinator for this um, undergraduate degree. Oops. Uh, so radiography and medical imaging course develops the skills to become a registered radiographer and practice as such. What does a radiographer do? A radiographer facilitates patient diagnosis, management and treatment by using x-rays, and this can include CT, scanning, ultrasound scanning, and magnetic resonance imaging, as well as the sort of plain x-rays that we probably all know quite well. And the radiographers are responsible for creating diagnostic quality images that can be then used for analysis and interpretation across the uh, sort of healthcare um, domain. So uh, at Monash, uh, we've got quite competitive entry requirements with the, some prerequisites for entry into our course, which include English, maths, and uh, sciences, biology and physics. And you can find out more information about that on the, if, if you jump on the webpage for the Monash radiography course. Uh, the ATAR is quite high in, in 2022 entry, the um, ATAR for the lowest selection rank was 98. So it is quite high, but the probably the reason for that is that it, it's, a, I guess, a supply and demand, I suppose, really, that we have a roughly uh, an intake of 80 students each year. Uh, there are only three universities in the offer radiography and medical imaging and uh, it should be first. so therefore you, you got a lot of interest in uh, radiography. So I've just popped up a course map just to sort of let people get a feel for what the course looks like. So it's a four year undergraduate degree. Uh, we structure the course around four main, what we refer to as themes. These include biology, 
radiation physics and safety, radiographic science and practice, and um, professional practice and research. And you can see that professional practice and research has a, a key or a very strong presence in the year four. Uh, and that's the part, I suppose, that's considered sort of the honors component of the course, if you like. Um, so that's sort of what the course looks like. Uh, it, I guess of maybe some interest in year one, two, three, and four divided into you enroll in semester one and then enroll in semester two, but year four looks a little bit differently that students enroll into a year long uh, units, uh, basically. So just a, a little bit of an overview of the course structure there, really. Uh, so the clinical studies is is something that we, we sort of, I guess, Monash and us in our radiography, we sort of pride ourselves on, like your clinical placement experiences start uh, in year one, semester one with a sort of a short two weeks worth of placement. And then in year one, uh, semester two, four weeks worth of placement. So you get a very, very real feel for, I guess, the role of the radiographer from the clinical perspective. So you get a real sense for what the career looks like and so on from quite early on. So this gives students a, a great flavor uh, of that part um, <clears throat> of their career from a very, very early stage. And so you get quite a lot of exposure to clinical over the four years in year one and two, um, you see six weeks in year one, eight weeks in year two, ramping up to 11 weeks of clinical placement in year three, across both semesters. And then in year four, we have quite an extended sort of 24 weeks worth of clinical placement in the year four uh, program. So it's so quite an extensive um, amount of experience in the clinical environment. Clinical placements, these are obviously really closely related to our on-campus teaching activities and students are exposed to a variety of metropolitan, uh, regional, rural, public, private hospital settings, and uh, also private practice imaging departments as well. We ha have COVID of course has sort of derailed that a little bit in the last two years, but there are, um, you know, are, are, have been overseas placement opportunities in the year two phase as well. So that was pre-COVID and we're just now starting to come around and re-engage our, our overseas clinic partners in that. So it could be quite an exciting uh, opportunity for students. Just with further um, studies and opportunities, I've just picked out some of the sort of, I guess, popular ones that radiographers tend to maybe follow. Uh, there's a Master of Medical Ultrasound, which is quite a popular career pathway for radiographers. So it's, I guess, important to note that ultrasound is a postgraduate qualification uh, beyond the undergraduate radiography degree. So just uh, to sort of take note of that. And uh, there's also a Master of Advanced Healthcare Practice, a postgraduate certificate in image interpretation, which is sort of a growth area for radiographers at this time, and also the opportunity for research with independent research through enrollment in a Master's of Philosophy or PhD study. Thanks. That's just a really little short brief of um, radiography, and thank you very much. Uh, there is Ask Monash is, is a great place to go for questions regarding enrollment and entry requirements and so on, um, and I can be found also as course coordinator on the uh, radiography webpage if people want to send me emails. So thank you very much. I will stop sharing and I'm handing over to Laurie. Thank you. Okay, thank you, John. And um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Bachelor of Radiation Sciences and give you a bit of an overview about what's involved and um, what opportunities are there for you. So what is the Bachelor of Radiation Sciences? Well, it's, it's a bit of a hybrid uh, combined degree program. And um, in, the, in the program, in the course, you develop scientific and technical expertise, but you also understand the variety of different medical radiation science professions. Um, the Australian healthcare system, and the fundamentals of patient care. So a lot of different things involved in it. Um, 
just what you need to have to get in it. It's quite similar actually to radiography, what the prerequisites are. Our ATAR is lower though. It's in the mid eighties. It's not as high as uh, um, the radiography degree. Um, our program is a three year full-time program, which uh, starts in semester one in February. So it's blended learning. Um, there's online learning. Uh, we have an online learning um, tool that we use in all of our uh, units for our programs as well. And we try and develop real independent analytic learners. Um, when you get into year three of the program, a lot of the, uh, the units are online um, and you learn in very close contact online with the, um, the instructors and the specialists in the different areas of um, radiation science that they teach them. So um, we deliver foundation studies and it includes an option for clinical practice in the third year and simulated learning in radiation therapy. And that's for um, students who choose to do and go into the radiation therapy path pathway, um, which would lead them into the Masters of Radiation Therapy. So not all students go into that. Um, a number of them do other options and go into other um, areas and choose to do postgraduate studies in other areas. So it's just some of the areas that um, we teach about. Um, computed tomography is one, MRI, ultrasound, and nuclear medicine. So a variety of different um, imaging and radiation sciences, um, different um, disciplines. And as I mentioned, you can progress if you have the, the appropriate prerequisites and um, GPA into some postgraduate units at the master's and at the doctoral level as well. And all of these are on a competitive basis and based on your, um, your grade point averages. So there's two specializations in our course. One is the general radiation sciences and the other is informatics, which started mm, a few years ago, about three years ago now. And so in radiation sciences, you study um, ionizing and non-ionizing radiation um, in medicine. So things like radiography, MR, ultra, MRI, ultrasound, nuclear medicine, along with the patient care um, and different aspects, ethics and, and cultural aspects of healthcare as well. The informatics stream is an integrated program and it combines some of those imaging along with IT or informational information technology. It's run in um, collaboration with our um, faculty of information technology. So there's a lot of um, IT courses in there about programming, um, retrieval of images, all sorts of different things, security of images. So a variety of different units integrated with some of our um, radiation sciences units as well. So as I mentioned, it's a three-year course, um, and you learn about all of these different things and the latest treatment modalities. So um, you learn about how these things function, what the computer interfaces are for that. And on the right there, I've listed some of the um, different degrees that you can choose to go into or the different pathways once you graduate from our program. So um, you can go into um, health and radiation services, you can go into um, some other areas such as public health, occupational therapy, physiotherapy, social work, or radiation therapy. And those are all with going on into postgraduate studies, so postgraduate courses. And I, I will list that um, in a couple of slides from now. Um, so um, you can choose either the electives, which would lead into things like occupational therapy, physiotherapy, those sorts of ones. So we ensure that you have all the prerequisite units that you would need or you can choose the radiation therapy um, stream. And we take about 25 students in year three to go into the stream and they would take specific units that would lead them into the masters of radiation therapy. And in that third year, if you do choose to go into that stream, you would do a clinical placement at a teaching hospital or private radiation therapy center. Um, okay. Um, so these are some of the, um, the different graduate degrees that um, you may choose to do after you do and complete the, um, the Bachelor of Radiation Sciences or um, the informatics stream as part of the Bachelor of Radiation Sciences. So the first one's so the Masters of Radiation Therapy I've spoken about. You can also um, go into the Masters in Medical Ultrasound, Public Health, Occupational Therapy Practice, the Master of Social Work, or the Doctor of Physiotherapy. And then the last ones, which I put in blue there, are ones for the informatics stream. So it's biotechnology, business information systems, cybersecurity, the master of data science, and information technology. So lots of different options for you to pursue um, a career or a postgraduate degree in another area. 
Okay, and so um, just um, um, I encourage you to go on the website, find out more about it, and there's a lot of information there for you about um, how to get in and the breakfast that you need and those sorts of things. And I'm going to hand it over to Kelly now, and Kelly's going to talk a little bit about um, her experience. She's a third year um, student rep in the Bachelor of Radiation Sciences, and um, Kelly will talk about um, her experience in the course. Thank you, Laurie. Hi, my name is Kelly Stefanos, and I'm doing a third year of Bachelor of Radiation Sciences. Um, I graduated high school in 2018, and I went into a Bachelor of Science at Monash in 2019. And whilst I thoroughly enjoyed science, I was looking for a more directed university course linking to a career based around working with patients. So mixing my strange love of physics and wanting to be in the healthcare industry, I came across the Bachelor of Radiation Science and transferred in 2020. So throughout the three years of this bachelor, I have learned a huge amount of skill and a broad range of topics. And despite two out of the three years of this course being from my bedroom in lockdown, I have really enjoyed every step of the way. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about the kind of units that are offered in a Bachelor of Radiation Sciences. So in first year, there are a big range of different topics from pathophysiology, anatomy, epidemiology, physics, and IT through history and in healthcare. Personally, my favourite unit in this year was research and evidence in health literature. It taught us how to critically analyse journal articles and source information correctly. The skills I've learned from this unit has helped me through my whole degree and has made me a more critical thinker in all aspects of my life. In second year, we are able to learn about cancer, radiation therapy, radiography and nuclear medicine. At the same time, we're able to improve our learning in pathophysiology, anatomy, and research skills. In second year, we also had units about the Australian healthcare system um, and Indigenous healthcare studies, which guided us on healthcare practice that is appropriate, culturally aware, and inclusive to all patients from different walks of life. In third year, this semester, our cohort is studying CT, MRI, and ultrasound. In these units, we have actually allowed to observe MRI machines in person and practice ultrasound on each other. So there's definitely a lot of practical experience in this course, which has really allowed us to work out which career path we wish to follow. In third year, there's also the opportunity to branch out into different elective streams to go into courses such as radiation therapy, occupational therapy, physiotherapy, social work, and other, others mentioned by Laurie in the presentation. I personally am in the radiation therapy stream and will have the opportunity to go on placement at the end of July at Peter McCallan Centre in Moorabbin, where I'll be observing radiation therapists in the treatment of cancer. Overall, I love the practical experience this course has given me, along with the small class sizes, which has helped me build strong connections with my teachers and my peers. This year at the moment is a good mix of online and on-campus classes, which has allowed flexibility between social life, part-time work and university studies. I've loved using Monash study spaces in the library to study with friends. And the only downside to being on campus is spending all my money on coffee and burrito bowls at JYG. I've been trying to fix the issue by bringing leftovers, which I can heat up on campus with the many microwaves available. And also there's always one Monash club or group giving out free food. So definitely look out for those and plenty of places to sit with friends and enjoy lunch. Overall, if you love learning about the body and the amazing imaging technology in hospitals, whilst also wishing to find a career in helping others, I really highly recommend this course to you. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Kelly. Um, on to you now, Swati. Hi, everybody. I'm Swati, and I'm the B Psych course uh, convener. So that's the Bachelor of Psychology Honors course convener. So psychology, as you know, is quite fascinating. Everyone's really fascinated by the word psychology. And we've got a very, very different degree this time. It's a three-year degree, and which then you can apply for the fourth-year honors. So we've changed quite a bit. It's a very, very interesting uh, degree this time, and which will start from 2023. That's next year. And I'll just run you through um, your options, the units that you'll be doing, the uh, pathways, if you want to do fourth year, if you want to do your PhD, etc. So what is so unique about psychology here at Monash? Well, 
<clears throat> just like I put over here, we've got lecturers who are leaders in research in their fields. We've got labs where we've got experienced researchers and students who work uh, together. Uh, the Brain Park is one such um, a lab or one such um, a place where, you know, people, uh, they are researchers who research the brain, addiction, etc. cetera. Um, there's, of course, exposure to cutting edge, uh, cutting edge research and which we don't find in the textbooks. So textbooks just give you knowledge about what psychology is and, you know, the basic um, uh, knowledge. But it is our researchers within the school who can who can actually give you more exposure to what's happening out there in the world. Um, you can make your own scientific discoveries. There are places for you in the labs where if you want to do internships, you could. And Manat, uh, who is our representative, will talk about uh, this when uh, it's her turn. Um, we've got uh, two new uh, streams. So there's, you know, mental health and well-being and there's neuroscience. So depending upon your interest, you can choose these fields. So it's about, you know, how you can promote mental health, how, how you can influence people. And of course, there is work-based learning placements that especially in our capstone, third year capstone unit where you can have placements and internships as a part of the course. Okay, so you can select from two streams. So the first one is the mental health and well-being stream, and I'll just uh, tell you what it is. So in the first year, you do one APAC core unit. Now, what is APAC? It is our Australian Psychological uh, Psychology Accreditation Body, which um, when you get a degree, it is accredited by this uh, body. So you choose one unit, which is which is going to be your foundations to psychology. You choose one stream unit. So if you've taken mental health and well-being, the stream that um, you, you choose it from this stream and the unit that you will be doing is um, introduction to a contemporary mental health practice. So that's where you learn about community mental health. You learn about, you know, the system, the, uh, the Australian uh, mental health system, how it operates, uh, etc. You do a compulsory elective here, and that compulsory elective is the science of thriving. So this is um, where, you know, because you're students and we know that you're stressed, you know that, and this happened especially in the past two years because of lockdown. So our head of school did a research along with her team, and she's come up with a whole lot of, um, you know, ways by which we can help students, not just because of lockdown and not just because of COVID, but even otherwise, you know, how, uh, we can uh, help you. So this is the compulsory elective that you'll be doing. <clears throat> Sorry, and there's a free elective that you can do any any uni um, unit uh, from the university. Now in semester two, again, you do one APAC core unit, which is um, your uh, introduction to psychological inquiry. Then you do one uh, stream unit, which is allies and in indigenous health. Uh, again, you've got scope to do two free electives. In semester do, two, you do two core units, that will be your uh, developmental and biological psychology, you do one stream unit. So again, based on the mental health and well being stream, and then a free elective. Again, in uh, semester two, in year two, again, two APAC uh, credited units, one stream unit and um, uh, two stream units, sorry, in semester two. Now, year three is interesting because be, uh, you've got, of course, the two core APAC units that you will be doing. You'll be also doing um, uh, uh, the stream units, and then you have one capstone unit in the semester in semester two. So that's a compulsory unit, and this unit will um, you can have placements, etc. When you do this unit, internships and placements in this unit. You take the neuroscience stream, it's more or less the same, except you've got different units here. So for example, here, you in um, semester one, the stream unit that you'll be doing is brain and behavior. Um, in semester two, you'll be doing bio 1022, which is life on earth, because it talks about um, you know, the brain and it talks about human biology, uh, which is necessary for you, especially in the second year, because you've got a whole unit on biological psychology. Uh, then you'll also be doing um, neuroscience of communication, sensory and control system. So this is not offered by psych, but it is something that you will need to do if you opt, opt for the neuroscience stream. 
And in the third year, semester two, you've also got neuroimaging for neuroscience research. So that's by radiology. And 3004 is the name of the unit. And again, there's a capstone unit. So whether you choose the mental health and well being stream or you choose the neuroscience stream, the capstone unit is compulsory for uh, everyone. Okay, so where can, um, I mean, what can you do? What, uh, what research can you do? And, you know, where, uh, what are the placement um, opportunities? So there is, of course, we operate within the Turner Institute. So um, there are opportunities within the Turner Institute for US students to participate in the research that's going on there. So we've got different labs. There's the sleep lab, there's the brain, um, uh, and uh, you know, there's uh, the aging lab, there is the, you know, and the neuroscience lab. So we've got all these labs where um, as a part of your second year and third year, you can apply for an internship and you will be able to uh, work with them. Then, of course, there's the honors um, unit where you, I mean, where after you do your third year, you can apply for honors. Now, if you can't, don't want to apply for honors on campus, we've also got the GDPA, that is the Graduate Diploma in Applied Psychology, which is an online course, but it is equivalent to our fourth year honors. Internships and placements, there are summer internship programs available for students. So every summer in December, our students are, you know, they go uh, somewhere and, you know, learn the mental health system in those countries. So we had, in one year, we had students go to Sri Lanka. Uh, one year, we had students go to Bali. But I think for the past two years, we couldn't send people out because of COVID. But I'm sure the internship placements will start again this year. Um, then, of course, there are also placements in labs, in the various uh, psychology labs that we have. So it's a little competitive in the sense you apply, then you get, we interview you. And we generally see that students who are eligible, you know, get placed in uh, some lab or the other. Now, what are your career options? What can you do further with psychology? There are numerous options available. It just depends on what you're interested in, whether you're interested in you know, doing org psych or child psychology, counseling, rehab, um, psychotherapist, market research. It's, it's very, very wide open uh, and you can choose from all these um, options. And of course, there's also education. You know, if you want to be an academic, if you want to do something in the field of education, education and development, child education, that's also another option uh, that's available for you. Now, uh, this course, of course, uses your ATAR score. Now, I've said 85 plus here, but of course, this can change. So it's just um, uh, something that we put because we do get students, um, or we do want students to get an ATAR of 85 plus. But like I said, again, that it could change. It could be 80, it could be 82. That only, you know, time will tell. Uh, are they, do you have to do psychology at your year 11 and 12 to be eligible to do psych at university? No, absolutely not. When you come to do your first year psychology, we take it for granted that you have no knowledge of psychology and we try and teach you uh, in that way. So even if you come in semester two and you do psych inquiry, it you are not going to be disadvantaged because you haven't done the foundations of psychology. So we take it that you haven't done or you most students have no knowledge of psychology whatsoever. Uh, the only prerequisite is uh, a high score in uh, uh, English, that is units three and four in English. So at least 27 in English. And if you use uh, take English as um, an uh, other language, then it is 25. Yeah, and I think that's it from me. So um, um, so again, my name is Swati Mujumda. This is my email address, should you wish to contact me. And now I'll hand over to Manat, who is, uh, who is in her fourth year doing psychology, and she'll share her experiences with you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Manat, and I'm on your student doing psychology in digital Sorry, lab. Manat, you're, you're a little soft. <laughs> okay, I will see. Is that better? Uh, yes, a little better. So I'm fourth year honor student doing my uh, my honors in digital lab right now, and I'll be talking through my experience doing psychology. So as Swati told you that the course has changed a lot, and they have added more uh, units like mental health, 
and which will help you gain experience when you go in your fourth year or the second and third year you see like when you do your case studies you do your assignments and it will help you to your uh, knowledge for how to do things so first year is more broad and it talk, talks about like all the fields of psychology but as you go into your second and third year they become more specific. sorry manat your your voice is a little muffled again <laughs> I think you can need to come closer, Manat. You're yeah. too far behind. Just pull your chair a little. I'm wearing my AirPods. Maybe I need to remove them. Yeah, that's right. Just, just be in that angle. Okay, cool. Can you hear me now better? Uh, no. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Does that work better now? Uh, yes. <laughs> so much clearer. All right. Thank you. Please let me know if it gets muffled again. All right. Yep. You sound perfect now. Thank you. So in your first year, you will do more basic psychology units, which will cover all the broad range. So as Swati told that they consider no one has studied psychology before. So it's like getting started from the beginning. And when you go in your second and third year, they get more discreet and more specific. Similar is with your assignments as well. Like in your first year, you'll do a basic research essay. And in your second year, You'll, you'll have to choose your own question and then you'll be given the data. You have to make your own hypothesis and aim. And then in your third year, you have to choose your own uh, variables, research and research questions and what you want to study. So from broad to very specific, so it's very structured unit. And when we talk about why I chose psychology at Monash, if you search about the lecturers and the researchers working in the working at Turner Institute or in the research field, they are really highly qualified. And I'm doing my research with Hannah Kirk. And when I meet her, when I see their research papers and they're highly qualified people and it's an immense joy to work with them. So in terms of research and experience, you'll get heaps of opportunity to work in the field. And we have research opportunities starting from second, second year. Uh, we have voluntary research program uh, run by the psych team where you are provided opportunity to uh, work with researchers from six labs that are sleep, drug, aging, and um, neurocognition and you get placed in these labs and these labs are really helpful to get practical experience in terms of data collection and working in the field. And if we, and then if we talk about social experience in terms of psych, we have uh, our psych space Facebook group where we have uh, faculty members as well. If you want to socialize, connect with your peers, if you have any questions, you can ask them there and we all organize various social events for students. Like we had a movie night or barbecue events for just students to interact with each other. And we also have a psychology snaps club. The club basically runs seminar for exam seminars for students to prepare them for their exams and help them with the resources and support they require. So yes, that's it from my end. Thank you. All right, thank you, Manat and um, Kelly. Really good sharing from the both, both of you. Um, we have a couple of questions that have come through the chat. Um, perhaps you could talk a bit about employability and um, if, and if the degree is recognized overseas. Um, perhaps it's more of a question for Laurie and John. Uh, could you talk a bit more about our degrees yeah. being recognized? Yeah, um, and um, um, I, I looked at the chat questions, so a lot of them are sort of related to our area, so, so we'll touch on that. Um, um, the degree um, for the Bachelor of Radiation Sciences is different than, than the degree in medical imaging and radiography because you don't come out with a qualification to allow you to start into practice. It's not an accredited program that would lead you to become a radiographer or a radiation therapist or an MRI um, technologist or, or something like that. You need to go on to further studies to be able to do that. So that's the difference between the two degrees. They're quite different in that way. Um, our degree in the Bachelor of Radiation Sciences, now I'm talking about the radiation sciences stream, is more of a pathway 
to get into other areas. A lot of our students go into the Masters of Radiation Therapy, probably about half of our students do that. And the other ones are going into areas like the Masters of Social Work or Occupational Therapy or applying into the, the, um, the doctoral degree in physiotherapy or going into a Masters in Public Health, which has lots of career options. So you can get a job um, afterwards because you will have a degree and there's lots of jobs in healthcare that would just require a general degree, but you wouldn't be able to go out and be a practitioner per se. Um, and perhaps John should talk about the um, international employability because I think that relates more to um, going out and being a radiographer and working overseas. Sure, yeah, thanks a million, Laurie. I can speak to that for a moment, uh, certainly. Yeah, so like Laurie alluded to with the radiography degree, um, I guess you secure what we refer to as a title of a radiographer, which is in Australia, you become registered after you qualify and you have to renew that every year with basically APRA, the, the Radiation Protection Board through APRA, uh, to transfer your degree to overseas, like Monash is very well recognized. For starters, generally it's pretty straightforward, but it, basically what it involves is, is paperwork for the registration authority in the country uh, that you would wish to travel to. Uh, so if we take, for example, you know, some of the well-worn pathways from Australia will be to the UK, and the authority that is similar to APRA in the UK is, is, is called the HCPC. And they have basically what is, is, is an effective form where you fill out all of the details of your degree uh, and so on and, and submit that to them. And this happens quite routinely that people travel. And again, the degree is very, very well recognized and, and, and we've certainly never encountered any difficulties um, with, with having your degree recognized once you're qualified. And uh, in employability, there's in effect this worldwide shortage of radiographers, probably quite acute in the NHS in the UK. I'm myself, I'm actually from Ireland, and there's likewise is quite an acute shortage of radiographers in Ireland as well. So with regards to employability, it's quite, uh, uh, yeah, opportunities are very, very strong in radiography, both in Australia and overseas. And if I can add, um, if you do decide to do a, um, a postgraduate degree after the Bachelor of Radiation Sciences, such as radiation therapy or social work or occupational therapy or physio, they all, a lot of those people in those professions as well go overseas and, and the degrees are recognized. Sometimes you have to do a little bit of paperwork and things to get that, but lots of people um, travel um, with those in those professions. It's very, very common and a wonderful experience. Did we answer all the questions? Are there other ones? Thanks, Laurie. Uh, yes, the next question in regards is in regards to what's the difference between the Bachelor of Radiography and Medical Imaging and Radiation Sciences? I know you've briefly covered the differences, but um, there's also another um, confusion with um, radiology as well. So they uh, all sound very similar. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> Thanks. And, and John, I'm sure we'll jump in. I'll just start it. Um, but yes, um, that's often a confusion. Um, people think that you can come out from John's degree as a radiologist. No, that's completely different. That's medicine. That's a doctor um, who specializes in radiology. The Bachelor of Radiation Sciences, you do not become a radiographer when you finish. As I mentioned, you need to go on to postgraduate um, programs, master's level programs to become a radiation therapist or if you choose to go into occupational therapy or something like that. And, and John, maybe you have something you want to add. Yeah, sure. I really just kind of following up on that, really, I guess, like if we look at it again, radiology itself is the, like I mentioned earlier on, the radiographer's role is to produce diagnostic quality images so that they can be interpreted. The final report, let's say, on that will be conducted by a radiologist who has to undergo a medical degree, then this sort of usual path do your internship, generally house officer, apply for radiology specialist training, which I think is four or five years. So yeah, so that's, that's, it, it, that's a, a medical degree followed by specialist training. Radiographers um, are practitioners, so they are registered in fact in the same way, I suppose via APRA, just through different boards, how a doctor would be registered. And then as Laurie kind of alluded earlier on, radiation sciences, once it has its own opportunities, 
uh, is a very good pathway into, I suppose, one of these, what, what we refer to, I suppose, as one of the professions, if you like. Um, so yeah, that's, that's sort of the three um, items. And indeed, yeah, we, we, you know, we do get that, that they do get confused uh, uh, between the three different ones. They're unfortunately quite similar. Yeah, in their and the other picture. thing I guess we should add is that um, you guys saw how high the ATAR is to get into radiography. It's very competitive. So some people come into the Bachelor of Radiation Sciences hoping to transfer into radiography. Some students do, but not too many because you still have to have very good um, grade point averages or WAM scores to get in. So not many students are able to do that as a pathway into radiography. I'm not saying it's not possible, but you know, just a couple of years sort of thing you might get in. Thanks, Laurie and John. Um, the next question is for you, Swati. It's in regards to the streams for psychology, um, there were quite a number of questions um, asking about the two streams for psychology. At which point of the degree would students need to choose as well as um, are there only two streams that students can choose from? So you choose in your first year. So when you um, get admission into your first year, when you enroll into your first year, you choose between uh, whether you want to do the mental health and well-being stream or whether you want to do the neuroscience stream. So depending on the stream that you have selected, you do those units. Of course, the APAC core units remain the same, but um, you will be doing um, other elective units based on the stream that you've chosen. So because psychology is quite big, so it's our focus is not just on neuroscience, but our focus is now is also on mental health and well-being. So that's why we've got these two streams where students can select whichever they want to, whatever your interests are. Uh, you could select that stream and do the units uh, based on that. Thanks, Swati. Um, we've got a question for you, Laurie, or perhaps if Kelly, you'd like to jump in as well. Um, what are some direct um, employment outcomes or job opportunities for students who do not decide to do further studies after radiation sciences? I can jump in here. Um, it, it's very, there's lots of jobs that are out there and you would have to research and find out um, and apply for them. You would have a general degree with um, a fair bit of healthcare background so there are jobs in hospitals. Um, you might be working as, in a, as a research assistant, as a clerk, um, in administration, those sorts of things. You might find a government job. You might work in a private clinic. Um, so there, those sorts of jobs, your degree would be very well suited towards or industry. Um, but there's nothing specific that I could say. Our course is fairly new, and we haven't had that many years of graduation and most of our students, the majority have actually gone into radiation therapy and just this is um, next year will be the first year they're going into things like occupational therapy and physiotherapy. Um, and that's because our enrollment has increased a fair bit in the last few years. Um, so, so, you know, it would be like having a general degree in sciences or something like that, but this would be specific to healthcare. So you'd have to look at job opportunities in that area. Thanks, Laurie. Um, next question is for yourself, um, Swati. Um, where can students look to apply um, to? Like, what type of roles are available right after a three-year bachelor's degree? Yeah, now it just depends what your interests are. So if you want to uh, pursue, uh, if you want to become a psychologist, I think that's the most common question. And I've been reading the chat. Someone wanted to know whether, you know, how to become a psychologist. So if you're interested in becoming a psychologist, then you need to do your fourth year and then, you know, uh, do a master's and you also need training to be a psychologist. So just doing your master's or doing a PhD does not automatically make you a practicing psychologist. So there is training involved in it. But there are other uh, fields where you can go into, like, for example, you can go into community mental health practice if you do the mental health and well-being stream. Um, if you do the neuroscience stream, there are other options like getting into, you know, um, some labs, etc. because you've learned about the brain, you've learned a lot about, you know, neuroscience as such. So there are uh, various options that you can go to after your third year. Thanks, Swati. Sorry. Oh, go ahead, Vanna. Can I add what to Swati said? 
Yeah, yeah, sure, go ahead. <laughs> so when you're doing your bachelor's degree as well, apart from becoming a psychologist, there are various other options available for you to work in the field. You can work as a disability support worker doing your psychology, and then you can also work as behavior therapist or EF, EFDM therapist. These are the therapists basically who work with children with autism and ADHD. So, and you also get an opportunity to like, uh, internship and after your internships and doing your third and uh, third year, you can also apply for research support officer if you have interests in field of research. Thank you, Manat. Um, this next question for you, John. Um, are there any opportunities for studying abroad um, during the medical imaging degree? Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the question. So we don't offer uh, a study abroad um in any of our units generally because they're kind of linked um to clinical placements which occur in australia the only opportunity that exists really and again covid a little like what swati referred to earlier on is placement opportunities in overseas placements like students have attended uh, the uk scotland england um and even Israel as well, and um, Thailand, but they're for clinical placement components only. We have no study abroad option, if that's what you're referring to, but there, there has been, again, COVID derailed that for the last two years, uh, the opportunity to do clinical placement, so a part of units in overseas locations, and hopefully that will come back online um, in 2023. Yeah. I hope that answers your question. All right, thanks, John. Um, the next one's for you as well, John. Um, given the high um, ATAR as well as the high requirements to get into the Bachelor's of um, Photography and Medical Imaging, are there any other pathways that students can consider to get into the course? Yeah, sure. Like uh, there are uh, course transfers and so on. Laurie sort of alluded to it earlier on a little bit that you could, for example, do the radiation sciences degree and then apply for a course uh, transfer. However, it, it, it remains highly competitive that the uh, it, it's in effect is based on your scoring uh, within um, the course that you will have, have completed. And it's, it's, it's again quite high um, the score to come across into radiography, but there certainly are those mechanisms. There is um, where people can apply for uh, course transfers. Again, hopefully that answers your question, but again, quite really, really quite competitive. We have very, very few um, transfers into radiography, but it does exist. All right, thanks, John. Um, all right, uh, the next question is for you, Swati. Um, what's the difference between, uh, between majoring in psychology versus doing the Bachelor of Psychology? To do a major in psychology would be where you have, um, you opt for all units that are within psychology, within the degree of psychology. Whereas if you do um, a Bachelor of Psychology, you've got the free electives to take. But I think that is going to change now because this new course doesn't have the four year um, uh, guaranteed pathway. So after three years, you know, you, you do the bachelor's degree, you decide you want to go and major in psychology, you do the honors. Otherwise, you can you know leave and get into some uh, you know you can do something else if you wanted to thanks Swati um, the next question is for yourself um, Manette um, there was there is a question in the chat in regards to the stream that you have chosen so in regards to the stream um, for psychology the Bachelor of Psychology it's actually a new element um, for the 2023 intake um, however, Mana, if you could touch a bit more on the subjects that you do, um, that you're currently doing in your degree. So the two streams are recently introduced and will be uh, applicable from 2023. So I, the one I did was more of a neuropsych one. I did bio in my first year, psychology, and then I did BMF. And then in my second year, I did uh, neuropsychology and then all the core psych units. Neuropsych was one of my electives, and then I did radiology one. So apart from doing the courses, I have volunteered a lot in psych team. I was a student rep. I've also volunteered in various activities, like uh, I was a student ambassador, mental health 
and from there i have gained a lot of experience and then i applied for a, working as a behavior therapist with kids with autism and adhd and then i did my internship in third year in my lab where i'm doing my honors so i worked uh, my supervisor was really happy with me and i wanted to do my honors in psychology so i i communicated with my supervisor and she was happy to give me a position so currently i'm doing my honors with hana kirk and i'm hoping to do my phd in the same lab but yeah thanks mana and swati um but uh, um just touching on on new, the neuroscience stream again um are there any research opportunities in that area if the student is considering research after Oh my God! There's lots, lots because uh, uh, our our school has um, many labs that are neuroscience focused. Like I told you, the Brain Park is uh, one of them. Uh, there's the um, um, aging. Um, it's basically developing well and aging well. That's the theme, you know, of the institute. So we've got so many labs where you can actually go and first do your internship with them. You know, get a taste of what it is like to be a researcher, maybe, or to help out with or what's happening. You know, in that lab, and then you can uh, decide what um, uh, path you want to choose. So yes, there are numerous opportunities within the school. If you whether you take the mental health and well-being stream or whether you take the neuroscience stream. Hey Swati, um, on to you, Laurie and John. Are there any research opportunities um, for your both of your courses? Feel free to jump in as well, Kelly. Yeah, um, we have had um, actually um, one of our instructors, um, Andrew, who teaches pathophysiology. Um, he does a lot of research, and he has actually um, um, offered research opportunities for students to come and help him with his research projects. Um, but we um, and we have the research unit um, in there, but but that's the only one and there wouldn't be an actual opportunity to complete research until you went on to postgraduate studies. Yeah, and I guess I can speak to that as well in our um, like evidence based practice, I suppose, is a large part of our course. So you learn how to do research ethically um, and, and how it relates to your practice. In the year four unit, there uh, every student completes a review of the literature around the subject, but I guess we wouldn't quite refer to that as research. It's certainly not original research, uh, but there are opportunities for students who are interested, particularly in research, to um, take up research projects. And that has been uh, done in the past, and indeed some of our the undergraduate students have actually published uh, some of their work as well in the past. So there is an opportunity uh, at that stage, but it's obviously it's not funded research and so on. It's um, part of your undergraduate uh, degree program. So the, the opportunities exist in radiography, but a bit like Laurie, we, uh, it, it's an honours component of our degree, but really until you move on to postgraduate opportunities, in the uh, Masters of Philosophy and PhD, would we really consider doing research? But certainly, a path we exist into those. Absolutely. Thanks, John and um, Laurie. Um, the next question is for Swati or even Manad. Um, is there any opportunity for um, studying abroad for the Bachelor's of Psychology, given that you know travel restrictions are slowly easing? Yeah, there there is an opportunity, but not in the third year because um, the third year we have core units and we don't basically give credit for uh, that. So yes, in the second year uh, you could, even semester two, first year you can, but not in the third year. Thanks, Swati. Um, all right, let me have a quick look. Uh... All right, perhaps um, if Kelly, you could um, talk a bit more about, um, you know, your um, experience as well as your study load um, during your degree, like if there's any opportunity for part-time work or is it a really full on nine to five uh, type of cl classes? Um, yeah, sure. Um, so throughout my whole degree, I've been able to have like a casual or a part-time job. Um, so there's definitely yeah opportunity. I think it depends on how 
good you are at time management, but the the hours in a Bachelor of Science, I did have a lot more contact hours. Um, that might have changed because of COVID because lectures used to be mandatory to go to. So that could be a reason why I was going to uni a lot more in first year. Um, however, yeah, I've like I've had a job at Baker's Delight. Currently, I'm a dental nurse. So I've been able to um, study around that job and still you know make some money for myself um yeah in regards to like uni life um yeah there's there's a lot like on campus and like if I have a day off like I'll go to uni and um study there or catch up with friends um radiation science and radiography have a combined club that you can join and they have like cruises not like booze cruises um and they have balls and they have um like movie nights and trivia that you can do so there's a lot of opportunity to socialize with other people in the group um you also can get buy hoodies that have like a cute little logo on it for both of our um courses so that's really cool as well but yeah workload is is fine in my opinion um definitely opportunity yeah for work not i wouldn't say nine to five just yeah, maybe not full-time work, but, you know, part-time and casual, definitely. Thanks, Kelly. Um, perhaps, Manat, you could add a bit more um, in, for your, in regards to um, psychology as well. And uh, what, what are the hours like for a psychology student? So in first, first year, because everything is quite new, so you put in more time and more efforts. You try to grasp knowledge about everything. So in first year, you'll definitely give more time to your units and but as kelly said there are a lot of clubs events and we are we also as psych space we are organize various events for students do join them and it's not just study 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 so take time out for other things also but as you go in your second and third year units you get to get understanding about various things and you also work if you want to and you do various like internship opportunities so it it gets a bit relaxed, but in fourth year, when you go in, then it's like, I, as a honor student, I spend my nine to six in my lab, but after six, my laptop gets closed and I don't open it and I don't study on weekends. So it's like a full-time job <laughs> right now. So first year, more hours, like seven to eight hours a week, maybe for each of the units. But as you go in your second and third year, it gets a bit like sometimes you'll give more hours to one unit and then other units and it, it gets more stabilized. Thanks, Manat. Um, the next question is for you, John. Um, we have a question in the chat um, for you. Why would you recommend studying radiography? <laughs> right, yeah, where do I start is the question really. Um, so I guess for me, it's really brings a lot of different aspects, I suppose, uh, together in one place where patient care is uh, really, really strong in radiography. It, it offers a little bit like what Kelly mentioned earlier on, her weird love of physics. It, it sort of brings that into it as well those who like sort of a little bit of technology you're working with your know, multi-million dollar pieces of equipment that generate what are the most incredible images uh, of the human body that are non-invasive that you'll ever see and your responsibility is to ensure that they are really really optimized uh, for uh, the <clears throat> patient so that they can have the best outcome possible so for me, that's why it, 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 it provides, I guess, if we look at the career, um, it's, it's flexible. Uh, you can work in large metropolitan hospitals and you can work night shifts and you can work evening shifts and all sorts of shifts. And uh, you can have opportunities for on call and so on. Or you can work in small, smaller private practice if that sort of suits your personality, like medical imaging occurs in such a variety of settings that uh, you, you can sort of find, I suppose, your groove, if you like, uh, anywhere. Uh, it also affords the opportunity, I think, for to build a lifestyle that's well-balanced. 
you can travel with it. And um, I guess, again, coming back right full back around, the patient being at the center of everything that you do, you are certainly not going to have a boring day in work uh, um, at all at all, because every person that you meet along the way brings something different to your day. And something that I have found over the years, because I still work clinically, and that is that as you, <laughs> you, the more years, more and more years that you do, it's almost the imaging part of what you do becomes I guess it's kind of like, you know, that's core business. And now you can start to look at all of the other items that are associated in particular, I guess, the patient. And that's the part that certainly uh, I would be just I advocate so strongly for in why radiography is, is such a good uh, profession for people is that you have a patient there in front of you. That's um, your responsibility to provide them with a good experience, the best imaging that they possibly can so that they can have a, you know, the, the best outcome in their healthcare journeys, but also, I guess, the best experience that they can have at your hands. So that's sort of my um, reflections on my career as a radiographer and why it, I find it such a, such a worthwhile uh, profession. Also, I think what's, I, I think something that I kind of, uh, again, floats my boat is the fact that, you know, 90 to 95% of people who will come through a hospital will come for imaging. So we're core to 90 plus percent of patients' pathways through radiography. And it's a very exciting uh, place to be uh, in regard to the, the, the advances that are taking place there as well. So, yep, like I said, I, I, I'm not sure where I would start and where I would finish, but there's some of my reflections. Thanks, John. Um, and perhaps, Laura, you want to take this as well. Like, why, why should a student consider a degree in radiation sciences? And maybe Kelly could add on to it after as well. Yeah, yeah. And I think um, one of the main reasons is it allows you a lot of different pathways. And not everyone, when they start um, their, their uni, they know what they want to do. Um, we often change careers many times in our lives. And, and um, so this, this allows you to sort of think about what area suits you. Um, some of our students come in and they, they think they want to go into radiation therapy and then they decide they want to go into something else. Um, others don't know a lot about radiation therapy and they just are, are um, you know, they, they develop a passion for it over their three year um, course and really want to, to pursue that. So um, I think it it's, gives you a lot of options and that's why you may want to do it because you can explore a lot of different areas um, rather than knowing right away what you're going to go into because lots of lots of students don't know that. Yeah, I would agree. Definitely a lot of opportunity to kind of explore what kind of areas interest you. Like I personally really love radiation therapy, luckily, um, but I know a lot of other friends who want to do different courses. Um, but I guess this course, it teaches you both. Like you get to do physics, you get to to do um, anatomy like biology like you get to learn all these like amazing skills and especially like learning about patient care has been really like beneficial for me especially in my job as a dental nurse as part-time um, skills that I've learned in my uni has really affected my personal life and like being able to communicate to patients at work in a more efficient way um, and vice versa so, like it just it it yeah it's really good I, I like it <laughs> Thanks, Kelly. Um, the next question is for you, Swati. Um, what direct job opportunities are out there if a student chooses neuroscience as compared to the mental health stream? Is there a benefit to doing one stream over the other? No benefit as such. Like I said before, it just depends on your interest. So doing the mental um, health and uh, well-being stream, you know, you can do, um, you can, get into community mental health you can get into you know the uh if you want to be a therapist because you'll already have the background but again uh when you want to be a therapist you can't do it after three years remember that you've got to go on to do <clears throat> sorry your honors masters uh, or postgraduate and then do the training that is required to be either a psychologist or a therapist so um there's no advantage that you know that one has over the other both have equal pathways it just depends on what your interest is whether you're interested in the brain and behavior so you go in for neuroscience if you're interested in community mental health and well-being then you take the uh, mental health and well-being stream thanks swati um 
looks like we are done with questions. Um, before I wrap things up, have um, you got any tips um, you'd like to add for future students, perhaps Manat or Kelly, if you had a touch on tips for future students? Yep. So one of the tips that always helps me is talk. Talk if you have any question. Talk if you have any idea or answer. It helps a lot. You make a lot of connections and communicate as much as you can and gain skills and do a lot of volunteer work as much as you can. Uh, volunteer work is not only just helpful for gaining experience, but you meet a lot of new people and you get more skills like communication, how to present in, in front of others. And I told you, I did my volunteer internship in a lab and that, then I got my opportunity to work in the same lab in my honors. And maybe I might do my PhD in the same lab. So do a lot of uh, in vol volunteer work and talk a lot, ask as much as you want. And I've gained a lot of uh, connections in the FAC team because of this. Because I talk a lot, I ask a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I, I agree. Ask a million questions. And even if it seems annoying, like your tutors will be fine. Like they might seem, it, oh, another, another question, but like it really does help. And know that everyone's kind of in the same boat as you. So also ask your peers questions and that's how like people make friends and like yeah it gives you yeah like um you said it gives you so many opportunities just to um make connections with different people like I know some some people who are going in an ultrasound um study just because they were chatting with one of our tutors and like now they've got this amazing thing to put on their resume um and also yeah another tip don't you know stress yourself too out by starting heaps um it may seem daunting all the content you need to learn but um there's also so much much opportunity to do other things at uni join a club go to a ball you know yeah, do do things like that yeah and try and enjoy uni now that we're out of lockdown and there's you know less COVID around <laughs> Thanks, Kelly. And for yourself, Laurie and John, have you got anything to add for our future students considering um, a career in radiation sciences or in radiography? Well, I think um, you, you guys, um, Manat and Kelly, you really got it. University is really about a, an experience. It's about maturing and growing and sort of deciding what you want to do with your, your life and your pathways. So take advantage. Um, talk to people. There's lots of people to give you support and advice. And, and um, for, for us who teach, we love it when you, you ask us questions and ask us about, you know, what did we do? How did we end up in, in this area? I mean, you probably know from my accent, I'm from Canada and now I'm here in Australia and I've worked in lots of different areas and health regulation and education as a radiographer as well. So um, yeah, just take, take advantage of it and do the most you can. And, um, you know, you don't have to decide right away, you know, what you're going to do, but really take advantage of what uni has to offer. And Monash is a great, great place to study. Yeah, I think I, I could do nothing but really follow that up. I think one of the most exciting things for, I think, us as academics is honestly looking at these amazing, bright, smart, young people come into university life and uh, just, just, just it, it's a stepping stone on your, on your life and your career and so on. And, and sort of what Kelly and Manat have alluded to is, is, is making in the most of that in, in, in I think all of the aspects of what university life offers you'll make some of the best friends you've ever made in your life at university um, uh, but it's, it's for me it's, it's, it's starting to open up your eyes and really really see the world and again from, from our perspective it's, it's, it's uh, you know nothing short of an honor and a pleasure to like interact with again sort of young smart clever people that we know are going to do good so um, yeah, that's, that's, that's all I would like to add to that. So thanks a million. Thanks, John. Um, looks like I've got one more question for you, Laurie. Um, will content and subjects in the radiation sciences degree include um, foundation studies in physics or chemistry? Not in chemistry, but in physics, yes. Um, we have two units in the first year that are um, physics and it's you know radiation physics. So um, you, you learn about it and you learn a lot about it. We, we, um, we used to only have one unit and we expanded it to two because we felt it's a challenging subject for, for a lot of students. Um, and uh, 
not a, lots of our students haven't taken um, a lot of physics before. So these units really help um, help to prepare them. Um, and um, our students do very well in them. Um, they Because we have offered two now and spread it out, um, students usually are able to manage it without a problem. And we've got great, great instructors for the physics. Thanks, Laurie. Um, Swati, it looks like there's one very specific question for the neuroscience stream. Perhaps you'd like to take that before we um, finish up <laughs> the webinar today. Sure. Uh, the question is, does the neuroscience stream and psychology include learning about tumors and diseases like Alzheimer's? Yes, it definitely does. It's not only Alzheimer's, but you learn about Huntington's, you learn about Parkinson. You know, the uh, neurodegenerative um, uh, uh, kind of diseases. So definitely, yes, the neuroscience stream does offer you that. Even autism, uh, neurodevelopmental and neurodegenerative. Uh, those are the two kinds of um, uh, where we classify the uh, diseases. So definitely, yes, you get to learn about that. I think we also have a lab and correct me wrong if I'm uh, if I'm wrong, Manat, but I think there is the, I think the Karistianis lab where she deals, I mean, where she's a researcher in Huntington's disease, so you can get a chance to be a part of a lab. Yep, you're yeah. correct. Yep. Cool. All right, thanks, um, Swati and Manat, and to all of our other speakers as well. Um, so next steps, um, this session is being recorded today. Um, so feel free to visit our YouTube page um, if you'd like to assess the recording. It should be up um, sometime next week. Um, that's our YouTube channel and come by to open day. Our campus will be open this year. Um, so all of our courses that you've heard about today will be, will be taught at our Creighton campus. Our Clayton campus will be open on the 7th of August. So definitely come check us out if you want to have a look at our facilities as well as uh, if you'd like to chat to our current students and our teaching staff. Um, so have a good evening and thanks for joining us once again. Um, we hope to see you at Monash this open day, if not next year on campus. Thanks everyone. <laughs>